Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. So I'm out at the museum today on a Saturday morning, a very cold Saturday morning for South Georgia. Uh, it's about 30, low 30 degrees, uh, which is, uh, I know you guys up north are laughing at me, but it's pretty darn cold for me. So anyway, I'm trying to stay warm, but we're gonna get to work and do a little couple of little things on this furnace today, I think. Um, and let me get you kind of zoomed in here, and I think I'm going to discuss a few things that have come up and uh, what we're going to do to get around them. So one thing I try real hard to do uh, with my YouTube channel is to read all the comments that you guys put out on uh, on my different videos and try to respond to as many of those as I can. And uh, I thought it was interesting when we did the last video when I put these support legs in here, I had several of you guys comment that I was making a big mistake by putting these uh, supports in here. Uh, because as this furnace heats up, uh, the theory is, is that everything will expand and that this chamber is actually going to grow. And if I put these uh, supports in here, they can actually constrict it in place and cause a failure to possibly occur. Well, I did a little bit of research on it. Uh, I talked to some different people and the general consensus was that yes, it is uh, likely that that could happen. So I really like the idea of having these support legs in here and I really wanted to keep them. So what I've decided to do is we're going to leave them, but we're going to modify them uh, so that they can actually grow uh, as this furnace grows. So I've got a couple of parts here and uh, basically I got a, a pin and a piece of tubing. We're gonna put the tubing down in the bottom on the back side of this, the pin will go above it. And I'm gonna just cut this piece here. And between this pin and, and bushing, uh, as the furnace grows, those legs can grow, go up, and then when it cools back down, it should come back to the, basically the same size for here. But I think by doing this, I'll still have some support in here. Uh, it will, it, it's going to still serve its purpose for what I want to do, but when the furnace is in operation, um, it will allow it to kind of grow um, and move. So anyway, I think that's going to be my solution. So we're going to come in here, zip uh, this across, just cut that, and uh, weld these on the back side. Uh, and then the insulation will just fit right around that, I think. So that's going to be step one uh, with our modifications today. So I got a little uh, abrasive cutoff wheel here and uh, we're just going to come in here and uh, zip it off. That's the plan. One down, two more to go. I'm going to start by welding the little bushing piece on the bottom. I'm just going to tack this in place. My heat's a little bit hot there. It burned a hole in it, but I think it's still going to work. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the clamp or the the little bar on here as well. We'll tack it in place.
All right, that leg is in. Um, I'm gonna go down and do the other ones off camera. So the next issue I wanna address is I had several people comment that we needed to add some little gussets on this uh, bracket to give us some extra support. Uh, I am gonna have a piece of uh, tubing coming from the bottom down to the floor that will add a lot of support up underneath it, but I, I still like the idea of the gussets here. Uh, the problem with that, and it's not a major problem, is that this plate up underneath it is gonna be a little bit tight with the gussets welded in there, so I'm gonna have to take this little plate off and probably do some grinding or milling on these sides, just kind of make it a little bit smaller uh, through here to have it fit back up underneath there. But I don't think that's going to be a major problem. So I think what we'll do now is we're going to take the lid off. And uh, when we do, we will um, go ahead and put these gussets in. So I've got a couple of gussets here that I've just cut out a piece of metal. And we're going to come in here and just kind of weld these in. And uh, one on each side. And that should give us a lot more strength. I'm going to tack it in place. And uh, then we'll weld them up. Looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna get up under it now. I'll probably do it off camera, it's just awkward. And uh, put some more beads in there. So I've got these gussets welded on now. Uh, we went ahead and gave everything a nice coat of high temperature paint uh, just to, for some protection. And I've got my leg, it's just sitting up underneath here right now. It's a good tight fit. Uh, but this leg will also be up underneath this to uh, hold in place. Once I get the top put on there, we're gonna uh, get it welded in place as well so that it, we have more of the pressure on this will be going straight down on this leg and then also with the gussets in there we should have plenty of strength on that so uh, let's uh put the top on and see what it looks like well Moves around fine. 
So uh, I think what I want to do now is go ahead and get this uh, welded in place so it doesn't go anywhere. It's just sitting there right now, as you can see. All right, I think that's looking a lot better. Uh, and that was in the original plans, by the way, guys. Uh, if you look back at the, the drawings I showed, I know I had a lot of comments about that. We just weren't quite through with it. Uh, but that support leg, for sure, was always in the original plans, and we got it in place now. It's so welded down at the bottom. I did not weld it at the top again. I want it to be able to uh, grow or as, this, uh, as the heat expands the chamber. Uh, it's just kind of, that shaft is just kind of free floating in there, but um, it'll give it some support from side to side as I lift that up, uh, which will help keep it from flexing on the, uh, on the uh, gussets that I put in there. So it's all going to help support it. And, uh, and quite honestly, I think it's just going to give it some straight down support as well. But uh, when the furnace is hot, there will probably be a gap in there at the bottom of that between the hinge and that leg. And, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, the, the center part is extending way down into that piece of tubing. So uh, we're going to have plenty of support there. Next part here is the handle uh, that we'll use for the lid. This is just a piece of... Uh, Thick wall tubing, uh, one inch in diameter on the outside, and it's about two feet long. And it fits right in to the slot there. And I can easily pick this up and move it around uh, without any problem at all, even with just that short two foot section. I know I had several comments from you guys about putting a counterweight or something out here on here. Um, I, I really just don't think it needs it. Uh, like I said, it's fairly easy to operate with one hand. Uh, won't be any problem. Uh, I am going to fabricate a hook here to hold this in place uh, for when I'm pulling the crucibles out. Uh, probably not going to do that right now just simply because I'm cold. And I, in fact, I think I'm about to call it a day and uh, we're going to come back and work on this some more uh, in a couple more days after it warms up a little bit. So what have we got left to do? Uh, fabricate that hook. Um, I went and looked at some designs of some commercial furnaces and some other people kind of suggested this. Uh, and a lot of them on the lid have some, uh, some little brackets that come up from the side and kind of come back to the top. So I think I'm going to fabricate a little height addition on this and have some uh, little brackets that come out here that will kind of pick it up from the side when I do it. So not all of the not all of the lifting is right here on the on this uh, flange. It'll also be grabbing it from the sides. I think that will also give us some more support. Uh, you know, it's fine now when this thing's red hot. We don't want it falling apart. So um, uh, am I over designing? Maybe, but I'd rather overbuild it than uh, have a failure. So uh, let's see. Those two additions. Um, Another comment some people have asked me about, well, is this pipe going to be in the way of your, of your air and, and fuel here? So this pipe is going to be sticking out straight out this way. It doesn't come out like this. It comes out like this. So I got plenty of clearance there. I do want to come in here and uh, kind of build up around this area here out to the outside with some more refractory just to kind of give some support for my uh, burner. And I've got some refractory to do that with, but it's too cold today uh, for it to properly set up. I looked at the directions and it recommends that you don't do it uh, with the temperatures as cold as we're gonna have over the next day or two. So that's something else we're gonna have to hold off a little while on, but making progress. Uh, don't know if I'll be able to come back and do another, add those parts on to the rest of this video, or whether that'll be later on down the road. Really going to depend on what the weather looks like uh, later this week. Uh, but we made some more progress on the furnace. Uh, I've got the uh, insulation blanket that will go in here. It's a ceramic blanket, basically, that wraps around here for high heat furnaces uh, that will give us more insulation. And then we'll also we'll wrap this with um, a piece of uh, sheet metal or something on the outside just to give us some protection. Um, and with that, uh, we're, be, we're getting real close to maybe starting to try to cure this thing out. It's another comment you guys are asking about curing it out. I have instructions on how to cure this out uh, to ramp the heat up slowly over time. And, uh, you know, we'll be getting to that when the time comes. Thanks for watching.